chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again prove the tangent chord theorem angle formed by a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord on any point of the circumference of that circle this theorem as such may not be a part of any exam because our exams are not of subjective type but the way this theorem is proved the logical steps and also the result of this theorem those part those will always form a part of any question paper questions based on the logic of this theorem and the results obtained with this theorem they will always be there in any exam let us start by drawing a schematic diagram and then we will prove this theorem supposing this is a circle and also suppose there is a tangent to this circle at a point t and let o be the center of this circle and also suppose there is a chord like this this is a chord pt then what we have to prove angle formed by a tangent that is this tangent and a chord let this be the chord pt any chord of this circle is equal to what is the angle formed this angle that is this angle is equal to the angle subtended by that chord on any point of the circumference of that circle that is if this chord subtends an angle at this point let this point be marked as let us say q then we have to prove that the angle subtended by this chord on any point of the circumference that is this angle is equal to this angle this theorem is very commonly called the tangent chord theorem and an examination question could be like this that a chord and a tangent they form an angle of 50 degrees what is the angle subtended by that chord on the circumference a simple one liner question and the answer would be in one second if you can recall the result of this theorem that this angle is 50 then this angle will also have to be 50 but let us now prove this theorem so that our concepts they become very clear the proof is quite interesting and this theorem this requires you to have a knowledge of many things at the same time but the proof is not more than 3 steps so the step one is to draw a diameter at point t so let us draw a diameter at point t draw a diameter at point t so that it passes through o the center so this is the diameter that we have drawn and let us for simplicity for our ease label this point as x so xt is a diameter now since xt is a diameter then this angle will be a right angle because radius is always perpendicular to the tangent this diameter will be perpendicular to the tangent this we already know from the theorems that we have proved earlier this is 90 so i will mark this as 90 in a separate ink so that we are able to know that this entire angle is 90 because this is 90 so this entire is 90 degrees 
नेक्स्ट लेट एस ज्वाइन पी एंड एक्स सो वी विल ज्वाइन पी एंड एक्स टूगेदर लाइक दिस सो आर नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज ज्वाइन पी टू एक्स द एंड ऑफ द डायमीटर द एंड ऑफ द डायमीटर so we have joined p to x and now what is the interesting thing there two things have happened in this that is if angle pqt angle pqt let us mark this angle as alpha for simplicity this angle pqt you are seeing this is subtended by this chord pt see this but the same chord pt is also subtending this angle pxt pxt on the circumference therefore this angle will also have to be alpha the angle subtended by the same chord on any point of the circumference is always equal so if this angle is alpha then this angle also has to be alpha because this alpha is subtended by this chord pt on the periphery on the end on the circumference of the circle so i can write here which implies angle pqt is same as angle pxt which we can mark as alpha a simple joining of p to x has opened a route for us and we are able to locate this alpha here another important thing has happened during this that if this is the diameter tx is the diameter then this angle will be 90 degrees because this angle will be in the angle in the semicircle so this is a 90 degrees angle which also also we have angle tpx angle tpx will be equal to 90 degrees this angle is 90 degrees because this is an angle in a semicircle tx is already a diameter so this is the angle in a semicircle this is 90 now now let us inspect this right angle triangle pxt this one i am talking about what will this angle be this angle will be what this angle will be 90 minus alpha it will be 90 minus alpha because this is 90 that is alpha and this angle will therefore have to be 90 minus alpha because only then 90 minus alpha plus alpha plus this 90 will lead to a total of 180 degrees so i can write which implies angle ptx will be 90 minus alpha so we are coming to this This theorem is one of the most interesting theorems because it takes you around into the whole of geometry. Now, if this is 90 minus alpha, now what is this? This is 90 we have already marked. This part. Therefore, if this much part is 90 minus alpha, then this part will have to be alpha. because this alpha and 90 minus alpha will add to 90 this is already 90 angle ptx not the ptx but this one the formed by the diameter with the tangent so which implies let me mark this point as m or my marking it a bit late but let this point be marked m which implies that angle ptm will be equal to alpha so now what does this mean this means that this angle has been proved equal to 
दिस एंगल एंड द जर्नी हाउ आई हैव प्रूव्ड इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग आई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ड्रू ए डायमीटर देन आई कंप्लीटेड दिस एंगल इन अ सेमी सर्कल एल्फा वॉज ब्रॉट इक्वल टू एल्फा दिस वॉज नाइंटी बिकॉज द डायमीटर इज पर पेंडिकुलर टू द टेंजेंट एंड देर फोर दिस एंगल वॉज डिड्यूज टू बी नाइंटी माइनस एल्फा विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस राइट एंगल एंड देन दिस वॉज ऑलरेडी ए राइट एंगल सो दिस पार्ट ऑफ द एंगल इट हैड टू बी एल्फा एंड दिस इज हाउ वी हैव प्रूव्ड दैट एंगल फॉर्म्ड बाय अ टेंजेंट एंड अ कॉर्ड इज इक्वल टू द एंगल सबटेंडेड बाय दैट कॉर्ड ऑन एनी पॉइंट ऑफ द सर्कुम फेरेंस ऑफ दैट सर्कल लेट अस मूव टू आर नेक्स्ट थ्योरम नाउ दिस थ्योरम इज कॉल्ड द टेंजेंट सीकेंट थ्योरम वेन ए टेंजेंट एंड ए सीकेंट आर ड्रॉन फ्रॉम वन सिंगल एक्सटर्नल पॉइंट टू अ सर्कल लेट अस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ड्रॉ दम so that the things they become very clear to us let this be the center of that circle and here he says that from an external point p we are drawing a tangent to this circle which let us say touches the circle at point t and from point t and from point p we are also drawing a secant to the same circle and let that secant cut the circle at a and b this is the scene with us let us reread the statement when a tangent and a secant are drawn from one single external point this p to the circle to a circle square of the length of the tangent what is the length of the tangent it is pt so we have to prove that pt square is equal to square of the length of the tangent must be equal to the product of lengths of whole secant that is whole secant is pb multiplied by and the exterior portion of secant that is ap so this is what we have to prove that pt square is equal to the entire pb multiplied by pa this theorem although it looks very difficult at the outset like how will we establish this relationship this theorem is really not tough let us see how to do it for this we should join b and t together b and t are joined together this this i am removing because the center has no role right now it might confuse us this angle is not 90 we are just joining b and t together b and t have been joined so i am writing the proof here like this if you are still confused let me clarify all doubts suppose this is a diagram like this and it uh, secant cuts like this almost and this is then this is not center could be somewhere here this is not necessarily passing through the center so therefore i have removed this and this angle is not 90 although it looks like 90 because of the way i have drawn the diagram but bt is joined bt b is joined to t and a is also joined to t so we will say join b to t and a to t that is we have joined the end points of the chord ab to the point of contact just now we have already proved that this angle the angle made by this chord at with the tangent will be equal to the angle subtended by this at on any other point of the circle we have already proved that the angle this angle will be equal to this angle so i am ticking them together we have just now proved if you recall the proof that i have given a few moments back so this is our breaking point this is the point where our now proof will start 
Now my assertion is that the triangle APT APT is similar to the triangle PBT. This is my assertion that is this smaller triangle is similar to the bigger triangle. Now why first of all this angle ATP is equal to angle ABT. Angle ATP is equal to angle ABT. This is by the tangent chord theorem. Tangent chord theorem that we have proved just now. Then this angle P is common to both the triangles. This angle P is common to the smaller triangle also. It is common to the larger triangle also. So by angle angle rule these two triangles are similar to each other. That is this is similar to the bigger triangle. This angle is equal to this. This is common. Let us mark the third angle also. I will mark it by two ticks. So this is the angle of the smaller and this angle with two ticks will be the corresponding angle of the bigger triangle. See this angle is equal to this. This lies common. So this angle of the smaller triangle has to be equal to the remaining angle, the third angle of the bigger triangle. Now if these two triangles are similar, then the ratios of the sides has to be equal. What start with the smaller triangle. What side is opposite to two ticks? It is PT. So I will write PT and two ticks I am writing here for my knowledge by PT is opposite to these two ticks and what is opposite to these two ticks of the bigger triangle it is PB. So I will write PB and two ticks to remind me that these are the sides opposite to the to the angles that have been marked as two ticks. It should be equal to the side opposite to single ticks. Single tick is opposing AP. So I will write it is equal to AP single tick by single tick on the bigger on the bigger triangle is this one and the side opposite is PT. So I will write it as PT single tick. So I hope you have seen that we have proved it. Now cross multiply PT and PT will multiply to PT square which is equal to PB multiplied to AP. AP or PA is one and the same thing so I can write it as PA. This equality is what we wanted to prove here and it has been proved by a simple trick of similarity of two triangles. This simple relation is called the tangent secant theorem and in your exam this side could be given PB, this could be given and question could be what is the length of the tangent. One liner would be to multiply the two and take the square root. You will obtain your answer in one second. The square of this is equal to the product of this and the product of entire. So the proof was done by starting with the equality of this angle and of this angle. This immediately led me to the similarity of the larger triangle and of this triangle. And from there I caught my original theory that the ratios of the two corresponding sides should be equal to each other and within seconds I was able to reach my answer. Let us move to our next question now.